Greetings students and welcome to my new series on special relativity. In this video I'm going to introduce special relativity and then I'm going to talk about the relativity of simultaneity. And there's no better way to introduce special relativity than to talk about the two postulates on which it's based. The first postulate of special relativity states that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. By the way, an inertial reference frame is a reference frame that's moving at a constant velocity. And a reference frame can be loosely defined as a coordinate system plus an observer within that coordinate system. So to explain this first postulate, suppose there was an observer A standing stationary on the ground. Because observer A is stationary, the reference frame of observer A, which I'll denote by R sub A, is also stationary. Now suppose there is also an observer B. But this observer is traveling on a train at a constant velocity v relative to the ground. I'll call the reference frame for observer b rb. And because observer b is traveling at a velocity v, the reference frame rb is also traveling at that velocity v because that reference frame is a coordinate system with respect to observer b. Now here's what the first postulate of special relativity means. If observer A does an experiment, let's say they do an experiment to check the law of conservation of energy, and observer B does the same experiment, then according to this first postulate, they should both get the exact same results in their experiments, within the margin of error of course. There are actually some pretty wide-ranging implications of this. If the experiments that observer A and observer B end up doing all give the same results when those experiments involve the laws of physics, then there's not much that either observer can do to distinguish which one of them is in absolute motion. So when observer B looks out the train window, he can't tell whether observer A is moving backwards or whether observer B himself is moving forward. Similarly, observer A won't be able to tell whether he's moving backward or whether the train is moving forward. So neither observer has a good way of telling which one is moving using the laws of physics, and the implication of this is that there's no such thing as absolute motion, only relative motion. The fact that there's no such thing as absolutes isn't just limited to motion, it also applies to a lot of other concepts, and that's why it's called special relativity, because as it turns out, a lot of things are actually relative. Another implication of this postulate is that all inertial reference frames are equally valid in the sense that there's no correct reference frame. If an observer in one inertial reference frame performs a measurement of an object and an observer in another inertial reference frame gets a different result for the same measurement, then assuming that their measurement techniques are correct, neither observer is more correct than the other. Both observers are equally valid in their measurements. And this might confuse you. You might say, oh, an observer in an inertial reference frame who measures something can't get a different measurement for that same object compared to a different observer in a different inertial reference frame. But actually, in special relativity, I'm going to show you some examples where the same object can be measured differently by different observers in different inertial reference frames. But that's later on in the series. The second postulate of special relativity says that the speed of light in vacuum, which is denoted by C, which is 299,792,458 meters per second, this speed is constant in all inertial reference frames. Let's explain this with another thought experiment involving two observers. Suppose observer A is once again on the ground and is stationary relative to the ground. Meanwhile, observer B is traveling inside a car moving at a velocity v towards observer A, and that car is also shining its headlight. The first question is what does observer B measure as the speed of light coming from the car's headlight? Well, observer B is traveling at a constant velocity of v, so he's in his own inertial reference frame that I'll call RB. Therefore, according to postulate 2, the light from the headlight is moving at a speed of light in a vacuum, denoted by C, relative to observer B. This also makes sense from a Newtonian mechanics perspective. If I'm observer C and I'm moving in a car at velocity V1, and I throw a ball in front of me and I impart a velocity V2 to that ball relative to the car, then obviously when I measure the velocity of the ball in my reference frame, I'll get V2 as my final answer because that's the speed that I gave the ball. Now in this Newtonian mechanics scenario, what does observer D measure as the velocity of the ball? Well, it should be easy to see that observer D measures the velocity of the ball as V1 plus V2, 
This is because the ball already has the momentum of the car which is going at V1, and in addition to the velocity from that pre-existing momentum, the ball is given an additional velocity of V2. Therefore, to the stationary observer D, the ball appears to emerge at a velocity V1 plus V2. If I go back now to our headlight scenario, then according to Newtonian mechanics, the measurement of the speed of light from the headlight by observer A would just be C plus V, where C is the speed of light and V is the velocity of the car that's carrying that light. However, this actually contradicts postulate 2. Let me explain. Observer A is stationary, meaning that observer A also occupies an inertial reference frame that I'll call RA. Now since observer A is in an inertial reference frame, postulate 2 tells us that the speed of light observed by A that's coming from the headlight is actually C, and not C plus V. C plus V is wrong, it's not actually what observer A measures. Newtonian mechanics is false, and the life you've been leading so far is a lie. Now since the speed of light is constant in all inertial reference frames, the motion of the source of light does not affect the speed of light measured by the stationary observer according to postulate 2. Now in addition, if we combine the implications of postulate 2 with those of postulate 1, we can also say that the motion of the observer does not affect the speed of light measured by that observer. So if I took the scenario above and flipped it so that observer A was traveling at a velocity V towards the car while the car was stationary, observer A would still perceive the light flashing from the front of the car to have a speed of C. The flipped scenario and the original scenario are both equivalent because according to postulate 1, the laws of physics, which include postulate 2, are the same because they're all inertial reference frames. Before we move on to the relativity of simultaneity, let's first define an event. An event is an occurrence that has a definite position and time. In relativity, we can describe events using space-time coordinates, meaning the regular space coordinates x, y, and z, and the time value t tacked on as a quote-unquote fourth dimension. This ordered quadruple x, y, z, and t is also called a four-vector. It's a vector in special relativity with four components that transforms in a specific way. We'll see that transformation later in the series. An example of an event is the legendary fireplace chat that was held in the YouTube Rewind video from 2018. We can describe the event as occurring somewhere in California, which I'll denote by x sub y t, y sub y t, and z sub y t, and sometime in December, which I'll denote by t sub y t. Of course, the main reason I chose this particular event is that I knew it would evoke strong emotions in the audience. Please be sure to describe those emotions in the comments if you feel like doing so. I'm going to post a template comment below just in case you're having difficulty articulating your emotions in words. Now that we've defined an event, let's talk about the relativity of simultaneity. Say we have an observer A that's stationary on the ground, which happens to be a train platform. The reference frame of this observer is given by RA. Let's also say that there's an observer B who's standing in the middle of a train that's moving at a velocity V. The reference frame for this observer is RB, and this reference frame is obviously moving at the velocity V because it's the reference frame of the moving observer. So both of these reference frames are inertial. RA is stationary and RB is moving at a constant velocity. And this means that we can apply the rules of special relativity here because we have inertial reference frames. Now right at the moment these two observers align, we'll set all the clocks in both reference frames to zero. So we'll set the clocks in the stationary reference frames RA to t equals zero, and we'll set the clocks in the moving reference frame RB to t prime equals zero. In addition, we'll have two lightning bolts strike the front FT of the train and the same point on the platform FP, and we'll have two lightning bolts strike the rear RT of the train as well as the same point RP on the platform. So at time zero, the lightning bolts strike the front and the back of the train. For observer A to perceive these lightning bolts as striking the platform simultaneously, the information, the lights, that are being emitted from each of the lightning bolts have to reach observer A at the same time in observer A's reference frame. It's the same idea for observer B. In order for observer B to perceive the lightning bolts striking the train simultaneously, the information from the lights that are being emitted by the lightning bolts 
have to reach Observer B at the same time, in Observer B's reference frame. Let's look at what happens in this scenario as we advance a small time interval delta t. When we advance by a time delta t, the light from the lightning bolts that struck the platform will have moved a distance c delta t. In addition, the train and the observer B inside the train will have moved a distance of v delta t. Meanwhile, the light from the corresponding lightning bolts that struck the train will also have moved a distance c delta t in the reference frame RB. This is because of the second postulate of special relativity. The speed of light is constant in all inertial reference frames, so observer B, who's in an inertial reference frame, will still perceive the information from the lightning bolts as traveling towards him at a speed of c. You can see that as we've advanced a time interval delta t, the lights on the platform are both still at the same distance from observer A. So as soon as the light from the head of the platform crosses observer A, or reaches observer A, the light from the tail of the platform will also reach observer A. Therefore, observer A will perceive both lightning bolts, the front and the rear lightning bolts, to be simultaneous, because the light information from those lightning bolts reached A at the same time. However, this isn't the case for observer B. Because observer B is moving forwards, the distance that the light from the head of the train needs to cover to reach B is less than the distance the light from the tail needs to cover. Because both lights are traveling at the same speed C according to the second postulate of special relativity, the light from the head of the train will reach observer B first. As a result, observer B will actually perceive the lightning bolt from the head of the train to occur before the lightning bolt from the back of the train. However, I just showed that observer A perceived the lightning bolts as occurring simultaneously. This shows that an observer in one inertial reference frame may perceive two spatially separated events like these lightning bolts to be simultaneous, while another observer in a different inertial reference frame may perceive those same two events to occur at different times or to not be simultaneous. This phenomenon is called the relativity of simultaneity, that whether or not two spatially separated events are perceived as simultaneous depends on the observer's inertial reference frame. That is to say, simultaneity is relative. Just a note, neither observer A nor observer B is wrong in commenting on the simultaneity of the lightning bolts. Both observers are following the same conditions on what simultaneous events are, and both observers are in an inertial reference frame. Since there's no such thing as a correct inertial reference frame according to the first postulate of special relativity, neither A nor B has an incorrect observation of the world, they're both equally valid. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and if you enjoy the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.